Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Subba Tahir and Nicole Andelfinger, the wonderful writers behind the second prequel graphic novel in the An Ember in the Ashes series, A Spark Within the Forge. Before they were torn asunder, Laya lived happily and quietly with her nan, Pop, and her brother, Darren, within the scholar district of Marshall ruled Sarah. Although Laya is afraid to venture outside her home due to the heavy Marshall presence, Darren loves to explore all parts of their home city, even those that are forbidden. As a dangerous illness spreads throughout Sarah, Laya must confront her deepest fears in order to save a community besieged by disease. Meanwhile, Darren has a chance encounter with famed swordsmith Spiro Telemann that leads him down a precarious path away from his family, but towards hope for his people. Ooh, I'm so excited. This is so awesome to talk with you both again. First of all, welcome back to Boom Chat. Um, yay, thank you for joining me today. Uh, the last time we got together, we discussed A Thief Among the Trees, which was the first of the An Ember in the Ashes prequel graphic novels, which of course was amazing. Um, I would love to know what excited you both about working on this project together again. And I'm gonna go, Subba, why don't you, why don't you tell us? Well, the first thing was I was really excited about the team. We, um, uh, Sonia, who did the art and Nicole, who's, who did the script, um, we're just so delightful to work with. And it was incredible to see a thief among the trees. So I was like, yes, we get to do that again. Um, so that I was really looking forward to that. Um, and also just getting a chance to um, look into the past of a character who's so beloved to so many people who have read An Ember in the Ashes. That was really great. Nicole, what was the most exciting part about coming back to this project for you? I mean, anytime... I get approached with, hey, Seba has this great idea. I'm like, yes, let's do it. Doesn't matter what it is. Like, bring it on. I but love it. I have a huge love for those characters that are big, important players, but don't necessarily have as much backstory to them in the novels, just because, you know, it's limited. And so when we got to pick up with this one, I was like, yes, perfect. Let's uh, Let's look at these folks let's uh give them a voice let's you know let them shine so super on board and of course Sonia is uh absolutely amazing at taking words that I just scribbled down on a page and making them into something meaningful <laughs> so it's always I love seeing that happen so. well Speaking of characters that don't necessarily get a lot of backstory, we get backstory in this graphic novel. And so it serves as, you know, a prequel to the characters of Laia and Darren, but also it's just a really great starting point for any new reader that hasn't, you know, I don't know who wouldn't have checked out an Ember in the Ashes yet, but just, you know, if you haven't, this is like a really great place to start. Um, Saba, I'd like to know what... When and how did you figure out uh, what you wanted this one to be about? Like, when did you know? How did you know? What, like, what clues did you feel like? Did, what was, tell me the journey you went on. So um, the book series is told over the course of four books from uh, multiple points of view. We have Laia, we have Elias, we have Helene. Later on, we have um, the Nightbringer um, and we have Karis Vittoria for a very, very short period of time. Um, and so uh, I wanted to be able to dig into the sort of the big characters. And since we'd already done Elias and Lai, I thought it was really, I mean, I'm sorry, Elias and Aline. I thought it was really important to, to give um, a, a little bit of background on Laia, who's kind of, you know, one of these big characters. I mean, she's on the cover of all the books and, you know, she's, she's very beloved. So I wanted to... Um, I wanted to give her a backstory, but I didn't want to go too far into her past. I wanted it to be somewhat recent to the Ember novel. So this takes place two years before. And I wanted to connect it um, so that if you've never read an Ember novel, you can still pick up Spark and be like, oh, cool. Like, you know, this is an interesting world. Um, or if you have read Ember, you could also pick up Spark and be like, I didn't know any of these things. I didn't know that this is how all these characters connected together. So that is sort of where the idea was born from. And then... Um, I just kind of went from there. I was like, what would she be going through? What should be thinking about? What are the things that have shaped her? And, and Spark was born. <laughs> and I'm so glad we have it. It's such a beautiful story. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So Nicole, for you, 
Oh, excuse me, for you, I would like to know, um, this is the second time that you and Subba have worked together. Um, what excited you most about diving back into the world and helping to develop the backstory for Laia and Darren? I'm always excited to dive into the world of Ember just because I feel like there's so many themes that are relevant even to today. And in this one particular, I mean, we are talking about an illness. It is right now. And I just felt like, I feel like every time I get a chance to dip into this world, I get to enjoy these characters who are so rich in motivation, so rich in passion and what they love and what they think. And they evolve so clearly or they discover every something new every time. And it's just such a joy to work with them because I feel like I learn something new every time I get to go in as well. So... <laughs> I love that. Every time we go back in, we learn something new, they grow, and then they all, the characters become part of us. And it's just, I, it's so exciting to get to see like how everything evolves. It's part, it's kind of my favorite part of like seeing a series like continue on. And I don't know, I'm, I'm vamping anyway. <laughs> um, so the art, oh my goodness. So you both worked with Sonia Liao again for this project and her artwork is phenomenal as oh. always. Mm -hmm. So what's the process like when you're both working with Sonia to translate your vision onto the panels? And then additionally, Saba, for you, what's it like getting to see your characters like fleshed out like with full character designs? It's it's wonderful. I mean, I it's such a gift. I, I don't think I would ever write like a, Laia or Elias or Helene prequel novel that takes place in this time because I can't now imagine it without Sonia's art right like it just it's not enough to like write a novel like I would have to have her like somehow illustrate every page um so um so it's just it's really wonderful and then you know the process is um has been really smooth I mean I don't think that there's like tiny little things where I'm like oh you know maybe this person's um you know clothes are a little bit different or like you know May, they, they might seem a little younger, a little older, but the way that both Nicole can take an outline that I have and sort of flesh out what a character would be saying to bring that outline to life, that is incredible to me. I just, I don't even know how she does it. Um, and then the fact that Sonia can take that script, right? And be like, okay, like, let's, let's imagine this some of these panels are so beautiful that they I really did catch my breath and I was like wow I I cannot believe that this is what you know I get to see I I actually get to experience this so it's just such a wonderful experience I I know I said this like with the last book as well but I really have like nothing other to say than it's awesome <laughs> so hey. I mean, we do have Nicole right here. So Nicole, how do you take that outline and then perfectly translate wow. that into dialogue? How does that work for you? I mean, if I gave away all my secrets, well. <laughs> but honestly, it's, it always helps to have an outline that's very clear in where it wants to go. Because once you have an idea of where you want to go, you basically just sit there and say, all right, well, if I'm this character and this is what my motivation are, what would I say in order to help this advance along? So it's a lot of sitting there. It's a lot of uh, staring at your mouse and on, blinking on that screen going, all right, what are words? Yeah. What words are best? <laughs> but uh, you eventually get there. There's probably a, every time Saba sees a draft, there's probably four that come before it. <laughs> with me tweaking it but honestly it's just it's always so fun so and then Subba always comes back with absolutely amazing notes and then I'll see Aww. the pages that Sonia turns in and she's changed some stuff around and I'm like I why didn't I think of that like I'm so mad at myself right now <laughs> Sonia's such a genius amazing I love it that whenever I end up talking to creative teams, it's like somehow we've just found the perfect like triad of like how everybody works together and you all work together so well and you all understand each other. And I love seeing this like beautiful, I'm going to use a marketing term, beautiful synergy between all three of you. <laughs> oh man, that's, it's so great. No, seriously though, I really do love that 
the three of you are able to work together so well to make such a beautiful end product. And I really think that the fans are going to be excited to pick it up and get to learn about Laya and Darren. And so Saba, my final question for you is without giving like too much away, I mean, it, you know, where might the next one take us if we, hmm. So I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about two different possibilities. One is a little bit after um, both this book and A Thief Among the Trees. But another possibility is way back. (laughs) So I don't know which one to do yet. And I'm just sort of mulling them over trying to figure out like which one I think would complete this beautiful trio to kind of give us something that is really special and one of a kind. And, you know, we don't always see with fantasy series, which is like, hey, you know, this isn't a prequel novel. This is a prequel graphic novel series. And it doesn't need to be anything more than it never needs to be like, you know, a film or, you know, it just, it can be that and it's enough because it's like perfect. So that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. No pressure. (laughs) No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Saba, Nicole, thank you both so much for your time today. It has been so wonderful chatting with you both. And for those of you watching at home, be sure to pick up An Ember in the Ashes, A Spark Within the Forge, available now wherever books are sold. If you want to stay up to date on all of our amazing content, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification button.